Hello everyone, today we're checking out Spacebar. Spacebar is a single input incremental text-based adventure game. It says phase into the unknown thematically, grind numbers mechanically. So this is a game I don't know too much about, I have seen little tiny bits and pieces of it. The developer here, Rokas, uh, nothing else, always has very um, interesting unconventional ideas for his game, so it should be quite intriguing. Uh, unfortunately, there's no Windows download. There's only a Mac download for this, so I have to run it in the browser here. It's not that big a deal, but I do like to have <laughs> a downloadable version if possible, but we're just going to run it right in the browser. <clears throat> so I haven't even clicked on this yet. Uh, I did read through this briefly. Apparently we only pressed the space bar to play. All right, spacebar. So let's uh, let's test out the space. Oh, nope, spacebar scrolling. All right, and click on there. All right, it says main menu. All right, I like the sound effects. I wasn't entirely paying attention to what that said. Um, new game, one out of three options. Two out of three. Quick game, three to three. So. Do we do it with like the right timing after we press the button then? Is that the idea? It's not entirely clear. Um, it says right here, if you press space at any time, you see a new menu. So, um, I mean, just in the game here, you know, not everyone's going to read through this whole thing and try and decipher it or whatever, but just in the game here, it's not very clear, I don't think. Uh, and I would imagine that would be kind of hard to get across, but um, I think that's what you're supposed to do. So you can actually click on this. I guess he added in clicking input if you don't want to use the space bar. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, new game. Your future is gone. Present is no more. Past you will miss. You find yourself in abyss. Oh yeah. Okay, so one of his, uh, the developer, one of his previous games, I remember, had a lot of uh, kind of poetry in it, and it was actually kind of, um, I guess I would describe it as not bad poetry, which is quite a feat these days. It seems <laughs> nobody writes poetry anymore, um, which isn't true at all, I'm sure. But <clears throat> um, so this is like Explorer one out of one. So as I'm talking, I'm not like this isn't. Um, I mean, my attention is being divided between whatever I'm saying in the game, so I don't always see everything or like fully uh, register <laughs> what the uh, the words are here. Unfortunately, they kind of disappear after a moment, so that's kind of a, a disadvantage, I guess, of the the styling here is I don't necessarily remember what I just saw. Okay, so maybe. Okay, so I think every time I press this, as long as I wait for it to reset, I think it's always going to say the same thing again, though. So that kind of works unless I press it before but I did want to see like the escape key doesn't do anything I did kind of want to like I didn't check out the options menu and I kind of want to but I don't think there's a way to go back here like all I can do is go forward I don't there's not like a quit button um okay so it's interesting how when you select a thing, it kind of pops up on this button, then you have to press it again. Almost seems kind of like an unnecessary um, little additional input there. It's not like it's, it's sort of an infinitesimal detail, but just what occurs to me. I'm going to go ahead and press F5 here. Oh. Do we have to shift F5? Oh no, it did. It reloaded. Um, let's check our capture, make sure everything's okay. So I'm just going to start over so I can get to that menu again. <clears throat> check out the options. So yeah, you have to press it again. It seems kind of weird. Oh, there's a full screen option, so maybe we'll try that. All right. So that's still yeah all right <laughs> we got full screen 
Um, new game, options, quick game. So yeah, it, it kind of feels um, counterintuitive that after you select the thing you want, then you have to just press the button again. Like I was just saying, it, it just kind of feels like it should just do it the first time rather than needing an additional input there. Um, doesn't make a big difference like once you know that, but wouldn't consider that an intuitive thing. Past you'll miss you find yourself in abyss. Explore. Exploring abyss. Just wait for this, I guess. Um, I think one out of three. Okay. Um so I was just gonna say that when it said exploring abyss, um, like there wasn't like a fraction over here. So I was thinking like if there's a fraction, then that means that's a thing that you can, that requires you to press a, an additional input. The fact that there wasn't a fraction made me think that um, I'm just waiting for that to do whatever it's doing. The only thing is that like before I could get that out, it popped into this where there's a fraction here, but it's not, it's not the same as before where this was a thing I had to, uh, Press the input to stop it on this. So I don't know what this is trying to tell me, like the, with the one out of three. Okay, so. Wait. Oh, I have to press it again. Okay, so again, the additional inputs are kind of confusing. All right, so I can guess that the, the fraction before was. Yeah, so this incremented, so this is telling me that, like, the amount of abyss exploration. So it was just confusing to me because this was um, kind of inconsistent with what it was doing before. And there's not... Mm. I mean, I can I can understand it, but it's there's not, like, a lot to to go on to uh, understand those kinds of inconsistencies apart from like little bits of context, basically. Nevertheless, I mean, I do get what it's doing, so it's not like, it's not like I'm confused about it. I'm just, um, I do worry that it could be confusing potentially, I suppose, for some people. There's a lot of waiting around. Noticed spectral. Approach spectral. We have no choice. So it is interesting how um, there's a lot of sort of busy work and just pressing the button <laughs> over and over again. Um, that's. Uh, And how you describe it, like it, it doesn't seem necessary, but it's providing some kind of a, a feel to it, I suppose. Um, could certainly understand a way out. And yeah, so it's a little weird how, <laughs> like, everything's been crammed in, into this one, like, extremely simple object with extremely simple input, so, um, there is a, a sense of, of inconsistency in, in what goes on here. It does make it a little bit confusing, but it's kind of, like I said before, the little bits of context kind of make it so you can kind of figure it out. Um, in the context of a different kind of game, I would I would think those kinds of inconsistencies aren't really a good thing. In this game, it's sort of like there's not really any other option because the developer has um, imposed these very strict limitations on himself, apparently. So um, it doesn't make it not a problem necessarily, but you can kind of see why it is that way. So um, won't find it here. One thing, however, is easy to find, death. Spectral grimacing, spectral fading out, spectral fading in, fading out, fading in, see, pointing, seeing a portal, think. Okay. Um, 
enter portal. And again, I, it occurs to me there's no, like, there's no way to go back, like if you missed a, a line of text or something and you want to go back and read it again, that kind of thing, like, that's just not present in the functionality of the game. Um, teleporting, spectral, nodding, spectral, vanishing, arriving. So the text is pretty fast, it's not too fast for me, but it could be too fast for somebody. Death. And, uh... Actually, I don't really know what's happening. Why does it just say death? <laughs> Exploring death, okay. I guess death is where I am or something. All right, we got oh, do this again, I suppose. Okay. Um, all right, so this is... This, it does get a little confusing. I thought um, I needed to explore more or something. Like, I only did one out of two explorations, but now it's like... Using. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, the the fractions kind of. All right, now it says death exploration two out of two. So yeah, the fact that it said death exploration one out of two, and then when I went to do it again, it, the one out of two was because it was like the first item in a menu instead of it being one out of two explorations. So it's like there's um, this ambiguity going on and it gets a little confusing, unfortunately. <clears throat> Noticed Agent C, whatever that means. I guess we are still in death. Um, I guess we'll do the carcass. Reason. I guess we're going to... Alright, looks like bones, fragile bones with some tools. I could dig them out. Leave carcass. Okay. So it said I could dig them out, but it didn't, like... I'm not presented with an option to do so, even though he just said that I could. So it seems a little... counterintuitive. I'm gonna try this again, just in case something different happens. to agency, I suppose. Saw the bones? Yes, I did. Yes or no? Okay, we gotta go back. Indecisiveness one out of something. <laughs> I don't care. I'll give you tools, an extractor. All I need is a signature. Sign here. Um... I suppose I don't have much of a choice. I mean, there is a no option. Oh, please repeat, that's not a no option at all. <laughs> okay. I don't care, I'll give you tools, an extractor, all I need is a signature. So in this case, there is an option to repeat what was before, but it's obviously not an omnipresent option. Let's go ahead and sign it. We don't have any meaningful choices so far. We're just kind of doing <laughs> what the game uh, points us to. Took you a while. Here's the extractor. <laughs> Got extractor agency vanished. I don't know what an extractor is. Approach carcass, I suppose. Oh, we're... I guess the extractor is for... Removing the tools from the carcass. Or we're extracting the bones. 
Yeah, those are the things I was wondering too. Now we have bones, okay. I can't carry all these, I think. Take one, sure. Bones one. Agency manifested. Thanks. As per the contract, evaporating, soul lost, dying, entering void. So I guess... My soul is gone, which is kind of what I feared. Um, signing random contracts in a place called death. Um, but I guess I died? Like I went to a place called death and then I died or something to that effect? Now I'm in void. Looking around. I see an angel. Hi. Welcome, first time. Don't worry. Where am I? This is the void death prison. Um, okay. What now? Two options. One, channel life, a grueling process. And two, trade me a soul for life. What does that mean? You lost yours an agent then. It's your first death. Take these souls to life restored. Try not to come back. Manifesting. Entered dread. So I guess I got two souls, and I, I assume that having at least one soul means you can be alive. Looking around. Seeing pits. Looking around. Seeing queen. Queen one out of two, pits two out of two. I guess we're gonna go to the queen because it's listed first, why not? <clears throat> a bone, perfect. You will do... I guess it's you will do period. <laughs> I don't think there's any punctuation in this, is there? Dog pursuit, leave? Why is Why am I pursuing a dog? Kill the pit dogs, I'll pay you in souls. Okay, um... This is a little weird how it was called Dog Pursuit, even though I didn't know, like I didn't hear the request from the Queen yet. It seems like it would have made more sense to label it as, as like, the Queen's request or something like that, and then like after hearing what it was, then I could select that as an option, because I wouldn't have known what it was before I heard it from her. But I, I suppose we are going to... Okay, now we can do dog pursuit. See, now the, now the label makes sense, <laughs> I guess. Um, dog pursuit, and we're gonna kill the pit dogs. Wait. Oh. Okay, I guess that was wrong, so we're, we have to leave the queen, and then we go to <laughs> the pit. Okay. Approach dog one, approach dog two, approach dog three, approach dog four leave. Okay, so in this case they didn't have the um, the fractional for for the, the different options, so it didn't look like they were, it was listing options. I don't know if that was an error in the implementation. It seems to be an inconsistency. Uh, I don't know that there's any primer reason. I mean, I have no other information, so I, I can't know if one <laughs> there's like a uh, in order that would be more beneficial to go through here. Uh, fight, inspect, leave. Let's go ahead and inspect dog one. Collar is sparkly. I guess we have to kill it. We don't have much choice, right? You, charging bone, swinging bone, sparky. Charging jaws, bone hitting Sparky. Sparky is dying. Let's go ahead and. Oh, we got to dog three by accident, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do dog three. A snarky collar. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. It's, it must be the name. <laughs> okay. So the first name was Sparkly, which is a, I mean, I guess they're all, um, 
you know, adjectives. But a sparkly collar makes sense to think that a collar could be sparkly. Whereas it doesn't make sense for a color to be snarky, so I didn't I didn't put two and two together until until this time that they were uh, the actual names of the dogs and not like describing the dog's collar. Uh, Dread Pits approach dog too. Let's go ahead and just in case, let's be thorough. This is Barky apparently. It's kind of too bad that we like learn their names and the fact that they have collars and everything with their names on them before we kill them. <clears throat> okay, so so far it seems like we're we are killing them in one hit before they can do any damage back to us. I don't know that. Oops, okay. That was not intended. Oops, I was gonna check. Oh no. Oh, Dog Health 102. Oh no. See, I forgot to check its name and now I'm like worried that it's gonna be important. Oh my gosh. Okay, we killed Dog 4. Dog pursuit. You're done? Odd. Here. Souls 4. Demo over. Oh, okay. What can be improved? Good question. Twitter. If you want to follow the dev, you can follow that Twitter. Assuming anyone is watching this. Uh, Discord. You can talk to him on Discord. Thanks for playing. I do like how chunky that sounds, it's kind of pinball-like. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, definitely intriguing. Uh, it's obviously super linear. There's, as of yet, not really any, you know, potential for... <laughs> um, you know, actually impactful decision-making or splitting paths or anything, which seems like it would be possible, you know, but... Um, for now, not there. Um, and obviously, it's a little slow, and, and you know, you, you kind of sit around and wait for the bars and everything, and doing this and that. Um, I could imagine somebody might find that a little tiresome rather than being able to progress at more of a uh, you know, like a reading pace. Like with a, perhaps a more traditional text adventure, kind of throws stuff at you more or less as fast as you can read through it and, and make decisions, right? You don't really, you might not have to wait around for things like that. Um, so you know, I could I could imagine someone finding that more annoying than than uh, helping the experience along. As for myself personally, I'm not really sure, but I might. Uh, I don't know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, there's obviously some things where it's like um it's throwing text at you one at a time and it cannot uh like I mentioned before, it could potentially even be too fast if somebody doesn't read that fast or something. Um or if, you know, heaven forbid something uh, the player gets distracted for a brief moment by their dog or something and and they miss a couple lines of text and they can't go back and see what it was and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's obviously like a very, uh, super condensed sort of experience where there's, there's a lot of limitations that the developer is trying to, I mean, not a lot of limitations, 
uh, I should say, the strict limitations that the developer is trying to work within, which leads to some interesting compromises. Um, and also makes it perhaps uh, harder to get feedback on. It's like, what else can you do? Obviously, I mentioned the things that I thought of. Um, but... Uh, in terms of the writing, I guess, you know, it's it's obviously intriguing. I mean, I shouldn't say obviously, that's not an obvious thing. I would say it's intriguing. Um, I also kind of felt a little, like a little bit disconnected from it in the sense that um, it could be slightly confusing. There wasn't like a lot given to kind of describe your situation, you know, so it's kind of like... Um, leaves you kind of wondering a bit. You're not really given much detail or anything. It's it's sort of uh, might make it a little harder to get kind of invested in it. Um, since you kind of you might have this feeling of not entirely knowing if you know what's going on, <laughs> that kind of thing. That's kind of how it felt sometimes. So, um. I think, you know, a more traditional approach to this kind of game would, you know, elaborate a little more, like, describe where you are, <laughs> you know, just use more words and stuff, uh, and I can understand wanting to go for a min minimalistic approach, but I do wonder about that, like, how, how that might affect how kind of in the world the player feels, or how much they, they feel like they can wrap their head around what's actually going on. Um, because if you kind of abstract it too much, then you end up in this space where there's so little kind of concrete detail that you don't really know what to think about it necessarily, if that makes sense. Um, but very interesting. Uh, the... Incremental elements could be kind of interesting. I think the developer is aware that there's just something kind of satisfying about just seeing any kind of numbers go up for any reason. <laughs> I think that's kind of what's going on. So, like, even if, uh, like, oh, oh, okay, I think this. All right, so this responds to the uh, mouse wheel. That's what's going on there. <laughs> if I hover over that, um, that's kind of annoying. My might be worth uh, turning that off. Um, but the fact that uh, there was no like meaningful decisions or like actual gameplay, so to speak, of in the demo here, um, there's still like a few instances of, of the numbers you, you have kind of hidden in the game, uh, incrementing and, and even without that interactive actual game element, it's still, there's still a little element of kind of satisfaction where you get to see those go up and it might just be completely nonsensical and, that, and that's kind of quirky I suppose in the thematic sense um, I can appreciate that kind of thing I'm trying to find things to talk about I mean I <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm uh, I'm forcing my feedback or anything like that but um, um I suppose a little less obvious the kinds of things that one could come up with to uh, suggest for a game like this. Whereas in other games I might say, you know, this doesn't move the way I'd like it to or something like that, but uh, this is more abstract. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything... Hopefully, amongst uh, the things I mentioned, there's some useful bits, and um, I guess I will wrap this up for now. It's it's definitely intriguing, and I think the key will be to really hammer down like what element of this kind of experience is going to be compelling for people. Maybe the developer already has ideas about that, but... Um, I think it would be worth, you know, obviously this feels very kind of experimental and it's, it's, 
interesting in that sense alone but i think for it to be like especially since it mentions down here uh, he's gonna sell it for ten dollars um <laughs> or, you know that's what he's thinking at this point um to make it that kind of experience that people would find compelling enough to spend money on and and recommend it to other people then it's sort of you know it has to be elevated above an experiment obviously so um i would wonder like what that that really engaging element to focus on would be um obviously you can mention something like the writing is really good which you might say in a uh text based adventure game typically in this case you know there's so much limitations in play that it it's not necessarily that simple like it has to be really um i think uh you know a little more thought put into it if nothing else so um i might have you know, if I sit and think about it, maybe I'd have some ideas about that, like what, what the uh, the fun factor exactly would be that you should really focus on. Uh, but perhaps Roka has his own idea about that. Um, but I guess I'm just mentioning it's probably worth nailing that down, however possible, to really pull this off and the. Uh, the best way possible um but let's go ahead and wrap this up very interesting and let me know if you have any questions and i will see you in the next video